Dr. Usha Natarajan from UK. She will be talking on managing older HIV infected patients. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a great pleasure and privilege to be here in Mumbai in ASICON. My topic is managing older HIV patients, and um, I have about 15 minutes to do that. So I would like to start off setting some objectives. Why do we have older patients? And what is so different about them? Do we have guidelines for the management? and also a brief principle in their management. We should be able to discuss within time. So, in 81, what started as an acute terminal illness? You all know this. Patients were dying like flies. And then it became one with treatable complication. And from 96 onwards, thanks to heart, it became a chronic manageable disease. So no wonder if it's a chronic manageable disease that we are going to have patients who live through, get old, and hence we have older patients. But I want to also just point out at this stage, we still have, at least in UK, a smaller proportion of patients who are getting infected in their older age so that also contributes. I don't want to forget about that. So this slide is from UK, showing the life expectancy of patients living with HIV. The top two lines are the normal population, male and female, their life expectancy. And the bottom three are HIV patients, and they are stratified according to the CD4 count. So if I can ask you to look at this line, which is the top CD4 count in this graph, which is only 200 to 350, which is near normal. And nowadays we are talking about CD4 counts of 500, 700, 800. So the bottom line is they have normal life expectancy. That's what I tell my patients in the clinic. I say, You're going, your life expectancy is normal. You're going to be normal, so get on with life. So aging is universal. There are certain organ system changes, and also there is decreased physiological response to stress. But that's only one half of the story. With lifestyle issues, with smoking, alcohol, drugs, with your dietary habits and exercise, you can choose to age however you want. I won't say any more. So now we said they're living longer. As people live longer, it's not a surprise they acquire certain comorbidities, hypertension, diabetes, neurological conditions, and also cancers. So they, in turn, affect your bone. Your bone mineral density is decreasing with age. You don't have to be 55 and 65. We all know after the peak of 25, your bone mineral density starts going down. And it also affects the kidney, cardiovascular system. We know about all those things. One of the things which happens in, um, in the renal and hepatic clearance, when there is decreased blood flow, it obviously means that your drugs are not cleared. When the drugs are not clear, they are hanging in your system for a longer period, causing more side effects. So, POPI cohort. POPI stands for Prospective Observational Study, looking at the effects of aging uh, in their clinical outcomes in people over the age of 50. Okay, this is a study from UK. It's a multi-center study. There are about 10 centers participating. It started in 2012. It's still ongoing, but we do have some interim data. It is a very strong study in terms of numbers. There are totally about 2,000 patients. We have 1,000 patients 
with HIV over the age of 50, and you have 500 in the age group less than 50 with HIV, and you have also HIV negative patients over the age of 50. They are all very well matched for gender, ethnicity, sexual orientation, and so on and so forth. So, what do we have? So you have the comorbidities here. I'm just going to point out the first two columns. If you can just pay attention for the first two columns here. In patients over the age of 50, this one is 25, and under the age it's 10, and similarly in nervous system it's 11 compared to 8, 42 compared to 26. So I don't have to convince you hard you can see how much it is increased in patients over the age of 50 compared to the ones under the age of 50. Now forget about this column, and if you can kindly focus on this one, which is the negative patients, again I'm just going to point out 18 compared to 25, and this is merely 5 compared to 11, which is more than double, 29 to 42. Now, this clearly tells us with HIV, they get more comorbidities, and they are much higher than the negatives, and much higher than as they get old. Now, this is um, a Danish data, age HIV, and again, they had about 350 patients in each arm, positive and negative, comparing, it's a cohort data, and they started slightly younger age group, 45 and over, okay? So all the dark slide, dark bars are the infected and the lighter shades are the uninfected ones. And it's not rocket science. You can see in every case, the positive ones had more, comor more comorbidities. But I'm urging you to look at one thing here for me, please. So look at hypertension. Okay, look at this. You don't have to be a statistician to say this is so much significant. Okay, there's a p-value, but look at this. So I would say, as clinicians, we'll have to be thinking about hypertension in our patients that we are seeing, which probably, they may not have to be 70, but even if they're 50, please think about it. Now, this is Swiss data. Okay, what is so interesting about Swiss data is 14% of them had four or more comorbidities. It's not about one or two or looking at hypertension. They come in bunches. Please bear that in mind. So in women, I'm going to hurry up. In women, we have the added menopausal changes, hormonal changes, which make them more prone to osteoporosis, that's an additional comorbidity we'll have to be thinking about. And in fact, DHS guidelines suggest avoiding turn off away. So we saw they live longer, which then means they're getting more comorbidities. So what next? If they get comorbidities, you'll have to treat them. So you get polypharmacy, and with polypharmacy, you have potential interactions. I'm not going to dwell on interactions, mainly because I know that's the topic of the next speaker. But you all know, we all know about retonavir. We all know about statins, what we want to avoid. So with pharmacokinetics, I already alluded to the renal and hepatic clearance, which is decreased. Pharmacodynamics. Now, your patients are going to be having increased sensitivity to certain groups of drugs anticoagulant, psychotropic drugs. Your two milligram warfarin in a 45-year-old is going to be very different when you're giving it to a 70-year-old. 70, 70 so be mindful of that. So the drivers of chronic disease. We said about lifestyle, genetic factors, we can't do anything about, so we're not going to talk. Heart, to some extent, contributes. From the SMART study, we know it affects the brain. With HIV, it's the persistent inflammation which fuels the whole issue of comorbidity. 
So do we have guidelines for our older patient? The answer is no, emphatically no. We don't have guidelines. There's no guidelines in BIVA. There is no European guidelines. Why do we not have guidelines? Because we don't know what is good for them, how they react to these drugs. This is where a poppy study is hopefully is going to finish in two years and we'll have some data and we can produce some evidence-based guidelines how to follow these patients, what's going to be good about um, the drug that we can choose. Now, for the first time, FDA and European agency has asked for age stratification. When somebody goes with a clinical trial, they're saying, what age? Are you going to show us what's happening to older patients? That's really good news. So with that, I'm more or less sure you'll be convinced that we are going to have more RCTs looking at older patients. They're not going to be excluding patients with comorbidities. In fact, they should be including patients with comorbidities. So we are clinicians. You have a patient sitting in right in front of you. You can't say you don't have guidelines, but we have to be treating them. So what can we do, time being? Have a good knowledge about the physical, mental, psychological status, and even social status. And look out for comorbidities. Don't wait for them to happen. Whatever you're comfortable with, Q risk, Framingham scoring, whatever, FRAX, look out for that. Assess frailty, that's again another big thing. When it comes to ARVs, I would urge you to think about safety rather than eff efficacy. We know all the ARVs that we have now works well, provided it's taken, of course. But in older patients, think about safety. So there are things that you don't want to be using, like tenofovir, which is renal and bone toxic, abacavir, we have some unresolved issues still. But it's not all doom and gloom, okay? You got listening to what happened yesterday with the patent pooling, I'm so impressed, you're going to have raltegravir, you're going to have dolitegravir. They are fantastic for your patients, especially if you have them diagnosed with cancer. Okay, you don't want to be putting them on something else, even if they are on some other regime, you want to be switching them to an integrase inhibitor, raltegravir based. It would be fantastic in terms of interaction. Now, TAF, tenofovir alphanamide is only around the corner. Maybe you'll get them more easily than we will get in the UK. So you can, so you do have options. Um, TAF, there's a sub-study showing the TAF is better in terms of mineral density. In fact, they said that it's, uh, mineral density increases with TAF than with, obviously we know that with tenofovir it goes down but with TAF, it increases, which is fantastic. And also, you have some non-nuke studies coming along, and you have some dual regime coming along. So you do have things. Oh, I'm right on time. So that's really, it's not doom and gloom. You're going to have some drugs, but you will have to be thinking more about these patients, looking out for comorbidities. So in summary, the life expectancy of these patients are increasing. They're getting more comorbidities than your normal general population. And you have to think about their needs. How can you improve their needs? And maybe the future is having some specialist clinics for them with your elderly care physician, with a pharmacist to check on drug interactions, to, to check on the number of drugs like polypharmacy which are sometimes unintentional. They are on too many analgesics, which are going to add on to the renal toxicity. This is actually happening at the moment in UK. There are centers where about 50% of the patients are over the age of 50. We do have some specialist clinics where it's um, with the HIV physician, an elderly care physician, and a pharmacist. These are three main important component of people who do this clinic. You will have to be thinking in terms of multidisciplinary approach, having um, physiotherapist, 
maybe social service, whatever it needs. So that's all from me. Thank you very much. Thank you.